How are all of you lovely people doing today? My name is John and welcome to another beautiful episode of the Zombie Storyline Q&A. This of course is a series where I take your questions about the zombie storyline and take them on. Whether it's a big, a small, or a simple question, I'm always happy to answer it. So either leave them down below or tweet me at JohnnyJ25 and maybe while you're there drop me a follow. We just hit 8,000 followers on Twitter. We're on the road to 10k followers. Let's see if we can get that underway. Without further ado, let's begin. We're going to kick off today's episode with a question from Carson Allman, who asks, How did the Giant Crew and the Shadows of Evil Crew get the new futuristic weapons for multiplayer? This has been a question people have asked in the Zombies community for a long time now. How is it that I'm able to go up to a chalk drawing and suddenly pull out an MP40? How am I able to get weapons from the distant future, yet it's supposedly the 1930s? It's kind of a weird thing, but we actually got a bit of an explanation of it in Origins, but many people actually ignored this radio. Take a listen. When 115 is channeled towards the ancient stones, an energy field appears to drag unknown objects into our reality. Is it possible that Element 115 is disrupting the space-time continuum itself? How else could an ancient box created eons ago bring forth weapons from different eras, perhaps including even our own future? Further study is needed to understand these powerful and unpredictable forces. This was the first time in the zombie storyline a character really acknowledged or look into the nature of the box. The box is pretty much bringing items from different universes and different periods of time and dragging them into our own. Maxis hit the nail on the head with his description and this is all because of element 115. Element 115 has the ability to create what we call interdimensional convergences. It was described by Nero in Shadows of Evil like this. Well, this is something else. This seems familiar. I, I, I think I've read about something like this in a book. This is an interdimensional convergence. Other galaxies, other realities are bleeding into our own. This all stems from interdimensional convergences. You may also know it as Element 115 Displacement. That was what we originally called it before it was coined in Black Ops 3 as interdimensional convergences. This all stems from Element 115. Element 115 has this property that allows it to transport items through time and space. It's one of the main abilities and one of the main functions of Element 115. It's the very reason that we're able to teleport. So because of this, we can assume that there must also be somebody else that kind of has a bit of a helping hand with this process. Whether it be Samantha or Rick Toffin or maybe another being, whoever is in control of the zombies or at least has ethereal abilities seems to also be able to dictate what's going on with the box. This is because whenever our characters draw an unfavorable weapon from the box, the first person they complain to is who's ever in control. Most often it's Samantha. Because of this, we can assume that when a player goes up to, say, a wall weapon or goes up to the mystery box, what happens is that item is transported from its original time and then moved into the universe and the time period that we're playing in. And this is the reason that we could be playing in the 1930s and use weapons from World War One, or we could be playing in World War One and use weapons from either 20, 2025 or 2050. That's what's going on here with all these futuristic weapons from multiplayer, and that's how the box and the wall weapons work. Moving on, we now have a question from Lunchable69, who asks, In the original moon loading screen, why is there a temple floating off into space? If you look at the original moon loading screen on the right page in the top left corner, you can see a pyramid floating off into space, or at least what appears to be a pyramid. You'll also notice that there is a pyramid in the foreground of this image where our astronauts are actually walking. This is most likely a reference to the events depicted in the Shangri-La loading screen. If you take a look at the Shangri-La loading screen, there is a tornado lifting up many pyramids off the ground. Let's know that these are incredibly heavy pyramids. We're talking about thousands of tons worth of stone, and yet there is some kind of storm lifting them off the ground, literally ripping them from its base and it's kind of weird we can assume that most of this energy is coming from the black sun or at least real energy because there is a black sun depicted on the ground although i would like to note that this is an event in the zombie storyline that hasn't been explored by treyarch this isn't something that they've gone into too much detail about and we can't really pin down to one specific event which makes this kind of weird and hard to really explain what we can assume though is that the pyramids were uprooted from the ground by this storm whatever caused it caused them 
to be lifted from the ground and they were either shot off into space and that's why there is a pyramid floating off into the distance or it actually entered some kind of portal and then that portal sent it into another location. This would be what was described as an interdimensional convergence. So maybe this also explains why other pyramids have gone into other locations of zombies. For example, we found a pyramid in Der Eisendrache, and this pyramid best suits the pyramids that we saw in Shangri-La out of any other pyramids that we've seen in the zombie storyline. So maybe that pyramid was actually from this event, and then a portal sent it into Der Eisendrache. And that also is what happened to the pyramid that we see floating off into the distance, as well as maybe the pyramid that we see sitting on the moon in the moon loading screen. This of course doesn't give much of an explanation for the pyramid that we saw on the map moon because that one is different in terms of style. This one is a black sleek pyramid that doesn't really fit the stone art style that we've seen in the other pyramids so it's hard to really nail down that origin. Although the pyramid that is floating off into space most likely comes from the Shangri-La loading screen and that event caused it to be floating off into space for the rest of eternity. Today's episode will end with a question from Alfredo Esperanza, who asks, My sir, how come the Nazi swastikas are replaced with the German Empire Cross? Let's note that zombies was not originally called zombies, it was called Nazi zombies. When you went into the menus of World at War, it would be described as Nazi zombies. In fact, all the zombies adorned swastikas, and in addition to that, the maps were decorated with swastikas. This made sense for the time period. The maps took place in World War II. You were fighting against Nazi soldiers who were then zombified, so of course they would be wearing the swastikas. This kind of makes sense. As time went on though, we slowly saw the removal of the swastika. Black Ops 1 only had one's map with swastikas. There were no swastikas in Black Ops 2, and when they had the opportunity to revisit Germany, they chose to set the map in World War 1 rather than World War 2 to avoid the use of the Nazi swastika. Things got mildly confusing though with Black Ops 2. They remade the giant which was originally Deriz, a map set in World War 2. Except the swastikas were all removed and instead they chose to use the Iron Cross. This left a lot of the community pretty confused and it made us wonder what year the giant actually took place in. Some people created the theory that the giant actually took place in World War 1. Other people suggested that maybe it does take place in World War II, although this is an alternate timeline, and in this timeline, the Germans had actually won World War I, and thus they stuck with the Iron Cross as their main sort of s symbol. These kind of run into their own separate issues, and it appears that the best explanation is that the giant does take place in World War II. It takes place in the original timeline that we played in World at War as well as Black Ops 1. However, Treyarch had to make the decision to cut the swastika from their games, and it was purely a PR decision. When it comes down to it, Treyarch doesn't make all the final decisions. Sometimes Activision has to cut the cord, and it was most likely Activision that said, alright Treyarch, you have to remove the swastikas from your game because they are one, going to hinder the sales in other countries, two, actually will make it illegal in other countries. For example, if you go to play World at War in Germany, you are unable to play zombies. This is because all the zombies are wearing the swastika and that is actually illegal in Germany. So Treyarch probably made this decision from a monetary perspective rather than a story perspective. That doesn't mean though, that they can go back in and change the story a little bit in order to better reflect the changes that they had to make because of what Activision and what the world was telling them. I don't know. This is probably one of those things that Treyarch will never talk about. This is probably something they want to sweep under the rug. Zombies was kind of something that they created on the fly, and it was originally called Nazi Zombies, and they realized this was going to run into issues, and they just changed it, and that's the nature of how zombies had been designed over time, and... I wouldn't look too far into it anymore. A lot of people had made a lot of speculation and a lot of people had made a lot of theories as to why Treyarch made this change, but it seems like the best explanation right now is that it's the best and most sensitive thing to do considering the world that we live in. And do the zombies really need to be Nazi zombies? I don't think so. That's gonna wrap things up for this episode of the Zombie Storyline Q&A. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and maybe subscribe for more episodes. I'm gonna be uploading multiple every week, and if you enjoyed this one, I'm sure you'll like the next one. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and bye.